Hey ho! Welcome back to another episode on the Thrifty Sites here. I'm your host, Sightseeing Sally, and today we're going to talk about the best place to RV on a budget. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Before we go any further, if this is your first time here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future vids. Continuing on. Before we get into that, I have a question for you. When you go to look out your RV window, would you like to see this? Or would you like to see this? If you pick the second one, you're in luck because the best place to RV on a budget can give you views just like that if you so choose. Sound too good to be true? It's not. For $180, you can get a season pass to the LTVAs down in the southwestern corner of Arizona and the southeastern corner of California. LTVA stands for Long Term Visitor Area and it's administered by the Department of Interior Bureau of Land Management. Long term visitor areas are unique to the southwestern portion of the United States and allow for RVers to camp long term out in the open desert. LTVAs didn't always exist. It wasn't until RV boondocking, which is what you do when you're camping out in the open desert, became a popular pastime for retirees, especially those coming from northern climates. In the early 80s, the BLM recognized a need to establish long-term areas to help prevent further damage to the desert landscape. Thus, the LTVAs were born. Your season pass allows you to boondock in any one of these seven LTVAs from September 15th to April 15th. That's seven months of RVing for $180. Contrast that with staying in an RV park for that same time period and you're looking at spending potentially thousands of dollars depending on where you stay. However, unlike your typical RV park where you just roll up and plug everything in, when you're boondocking out on the LTVAs, you need to have your rig properly set up before you come out here. Which means you're going to have to invest some money into your rig prior to coming out here in things like fresh water jugs, generators, and a blue boy. Not to mention money in a solar system setup. In the end, you're looking at roughly $2,500 to get your rig properly set up for boondocking. When you factor in the cost of staying in an RV park for that time period versus going out and purchasing all the equipment and getting your rig set up and then purchasing the pass, in the end, by the sixth month, you'll have already started putting money back into your pocket because you won't be spending $500 a month at an RV park. And that's only if you're a boondocking RV newbie, in that you've never boondocked before and you don't have any of that equipment. For those of you who are veteran RV boondockers, this is why I think getting the $180 pass for the LTVAs is still a good deal, is because you're getting things like your trash disposal, your water, and your sewer dump, all included with the LTVA sticker price. Not to mention, if you're short-terming it, if you're boondocking only short-term stays, you have to factor in things like your fuel costs, your fuel economy. How much money are you spending in gas or diesel fuel every time you have to move? Because remember, if you're doing the short-term boondocking, you're subject to 14-day stay limits in a 28-day period, unless otherwise posted, and once you hit that 14 days, you have to move outside that area at least 25 miles. And so you're gonna be spending what you don't spend on a long-term pass, you're gonna be spending on things like gas, water, and sewer dump, and trash disposal. Depending on which LTVA you stay in determines which amenities are available. Things like trash disposal, dump stations, fresh water, and restrooms. For example, if you stay at the Imperial LTVA, you have access to hot showers via the campground on Squaw Lake. Hot 
hot showers. Who doesn't love a hot shower? Stay tuned for a future video in which I share my secret to getting a really cheap shower here at the campground. The other perk to staying at Imperial LTVA is within half mile, quarter mile or so down the road, depending on where you set up camp, is the boat launch. Now, I'm certainly not advocating that you only stay at the Imperial LTVA, but if you're an RVer who typically stays at RV resorts on the water or prefers to stay in RV parks close to water access, you may want to consider staying at the Imperial LTVA instead. And you can choose one of seven different places and you can move through throughout these seven areas throughout the entire winter season. So it's a basically a win-win situation. Because remember, you're spending only $180 to spend the entire winter season down here in the LTVAs. I'm telling you, there's no RV park in the entire United States that can beat that. If there is, let me know in the comments section below. I might want to stay there. What it boils down to is this. If you're an RVer who likes to stay in one spot for the entire winter, the $180 is a fantastic deal. If you're an RVer who likes to move around, I still think the $180 is a great deal when you take into consideration the fact that the LTVA sticker gives you access to seven different LTVAs, your water, your sewer dump, and your trash disposal. I know there's a lot of free boondocking sites out there and a lot of great national parks and a lot of places where you can RV. But again, if you're on a budget and you're looking to escape the winter up in the northern states and you want to stay somewhere where it's relatively warm, coming down to the LTVAs here may be your best option. Obviously, this is just my opinion, which I know you came here to hear. But what I'm interested in is knowing what would you do? Would you spend the $180? Let me know in the comments section below. Before I wrap this up, I want to cover a couple more things about the fees. One being, because this is a government entity, they do not offer refunds for any reason. Two, if you wish to stay on the LTVA for a shorter period of time, you're in luck because they have a 14-day consecutive pass. That pass is $40, I believe, and you can purchase as many of those passes as you wish. And finally, because these are considered undeveloped campgrounds, they do not offer any kind of discount. Questions, comments, thoughts, leave them in the comments section below. Until next time. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible.